Over 130 years ago, in a small Liberian village in West Africa, Prince Kabu, the eldest son of a crew tribal chieftain, was born. While still a child, a neighboring clan, the Graybos, defeated Kabu's people and demanded that Kabu's father, the chief, pay a hefty tribute or ransom for his son's return. The conquering chief subjected Kabu to terrible treatment and cruel labor when he deemed the tribute to be inadequate. During one of the many intense whippings in which the Greybo tribe intended to kill him, Kabu and those around him saw a bright light and heard a voice from heaven telling him to flee. Run, Kabu, run! Kabu recalled that the same moment the ropes binding him fell to the ground, after which he miraculously gathered his strength and ran into the jungle. Kabu eventually found his way to a coffee plantation where the owners, former slaves, allowed him to stay and work. He was also able to attend church services. One day at church, Lizzie McNeil, a missionary, spoke on the conversion of the Apostle Paul from Saul as portrayed in Acts chapter 9. Kabu immediately recognized the story as being similar to his escape. Kabu ran to the front of the church saying, I know that voice. He realized his heavenly father had rescued him and he faithfully devoted the rest of his life to him, accepted Christ as his savior, and was baptized, choosing to change his name to Samuel Morris to honor the missionary's benefactor. Samuel was happy with his new life. He spent the next two years painting houses in Monrovia, the capital of Liberia. He became a zealous member of the Christian community and displayed a fervent desire to learn about the Holy Spirit. But he was also sad that the African tribal people of his country of Liberia did not know about Jesus. He decided to go to America, seek the instruction of Stephen Merritt, who had taught the missionaries, and learn to be a missionary himself. So Samuel made the grueling and dangerous voyage to America. The sailors fought storms, illness, exhausting work, and each other. Many of them bullied and threatened Samuel, but God prevailed. By the end of the voyage, many of the crew wanted to follow Samuel's God. In America, Samuel found Stephen Merritt as a pastor and sponsor of a rescue mission. Merritt received Morris warmly, but his first meeting would set the stage for how Samuel's impact would grow in America. When Samuel first came to meet him, Stephen Merritt had a meeting to attend and had Samuel wait. But after the meeting, Merritt forgot that Samuel was waiting and left the mission. When he remembered and returned, he was surprised to see Samuel surrounded by about 20 people in the mission, sharing his story and leading many of them to Christ. You too have a story. We all do. Are you willing to fervently follow your Heavenly Father and tell the world your testimony, your story? Samuel's impact to the kingdom was achieved simply because he was willing, even eager, to tell his story and pray. If each of us we're willing to do as Samuel did with passion and humble obedience. Perhaps we could reach every.